Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be checking out Newton's second law. And in this problem, we have a rightward force of 525 newtons that is applied to a 58 kilogram crate to accelerate it across the floor. The coefficient of friction between the crate and the floor is 0.625. And we're looking to determine the acceleration of the crate. All right, guys, so here we go. We got a Newton's second law problem, which pretty much says if I have an unbalanced force, all right, an unbalanced force, I'm going to exceed an acceleration. And if I don't have an unbalanced force, the net force equals zero, then my object is not accelerating. And if I have something that has zero acceleration, that either means it's at rest or it's moving at constant velocity. So the first thing we did is read the problem. I do want you to see that there are these four equations that we'll be using today. Um, let's just number them one, two, three, and four. This is uh, the F net equals mass times acceleration. This is the net force equals force one plus force two. So technically, these two things are exactly the same exact thing. Right? But we'll be using both of them probably. Over here, I see the force of gravity, which is also known as the weight, is equal to the mass times gravity. And for gravity, we're going to use negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Lastly, the force of friction is going to be equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force. So let's check this out here. We have a rightward force of 525 newtons. All right, that's going to be a key thing for us. Let's just highlight that. It's applied to a 58 kilogram crate. We're going to highlight that as well to accelerate it across the floor. All right, so this thing could be seeing some acceleration. The coefficient of friction between the crate and the floor is a big number for us here. And lastly, determine the acceleration. And the problem is asking us right off the bat to determine the acceleration. So that kind of, you know, indicates there's a good chance that we're going to have to use this formula right here at the very, very end of the problem. So if we're keying in on the acceleration, that is the only place where you're going to see acceleration in any of these formulas that I provided for you. So let's check this out here, guys. Let's rock and roll first with a free body diagram. A free body diagram is going to be shown as a square uh, to demonstrate the crate. And I'm going to draw the forces acting on it. Now here's the floor. All right, so let's label this up here. We have a 58 kilogram crate, so I'm just going to label this as over here, 58 kilograms. And that's how much the crate is. Well, let's just draw this going down here. So the force of gravity is pulling down on it, and it's pulling down on the 58 kilogram crate. We also have a normal force going upwards, equal and opposite to the force of gravity in this case. Let's label that force as normal. We have our rightward applied force, I'm going to call that Fa, is going to be equal to 525 newtons and we're going to have in this case a force of friction as well opposite direction and that's going to be over here force of friction and we don't know what that is yet actually we're still going to have to calculate that and lastly I like to do this for the coefficient of friction a little arrow to the bottom of the crate in between the surface and that's going to be 0 0.625 and that is a unitless number now everything's out on the table here and I guess the question is, where do we begin? And you have to look at the givens that you have here. All right, we have a force applied over here, 525 newtons. You know, um, we have a force friction with nothing on it yet, a force normal with nothing on it. I have a force of gravity, and I can use that actually. I can use the force of gravity because I do have a mass. And so over here, we're gonna look at this formula here. Force of gravity equals mass times gravity. That's where I'm going to begin the problem. So the force of gravity is going to be equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. And Fg is going to be equal to 58 kilograms multiplied by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the force of gravity is going to be equal to negative 568 0.4 newtons negative for a downward direction. So I have Fg right there. So what I've done, I've used this formula. So right now, I'm just going to cross it off. It's not one of the choices anymore. In this case, the force normal is going to be equal and opposite to the force of gravity. In this case, I'll have a plus 568.4 newton force. Awesome. Now we can work over here. Where can I use my force normal? Do I see that anywhere in here? Well, F net equals mass times acceleration. I have mass, and I don't have, that's the only thing I have. So I can't, I don't have acceleration. I don't have F net yet. So I can't really use this equation. I have F1 and F2. Now going up and down, okay, in the y axis, I could use this, okay, because the force one is equal to force two. And they cancel each other out. So I have no acceleration in the y-axis. So that's cool. But how about in the x-axis? 
Well, the F net in the X axis is going to equal the force of friction plus the force applied. Now, I don't have friction yet, so I can't use this. What I can use, though, is the force of friction formula because I have the coefficient of friction, which is right here, and I also have the force normal now. So let's use this equation. So the force of friction is going to equal to 0.625. That's the coefficient of friction that was supplied to us in the problem. And we also have the force normal. The force normal is 568.4 newtons. And when you multiply the both of them together, we're going to find out the force of friction is going to be equal to negative 355.4. Two five newtons, and it's negative because it's a leftward force. Leftward meaning directional. So here I have the force of friction is going to be equal to negative three hundred and fifty-five point two five newtons. All right, guys, I've just used this formula here now too. I have two formulas left to use. All everything's kind of down here. This force of friction is down. It's I'm going to try and write it over here. Three fifty-five point two five. That was a negative. All right, guys, we're on to our final part of the problem here. That's the F net. So we're going to look at this now. I have the force of friction, and so I can call force 1 the force of friction, and I can call force 2 the force applied. So the F net, the net force, or the sum of all forces in the X direction. Let's add them up. All right, I'm going to bring this over here. The F net in the X direction is going to be equal to 525 newtons minus 355 0.25 newtons. All right, it's kind of like a tug of war. The 525 is pulling this way, the 355 is pulling this way. You're going to cancel that a little bit, and when we do this, we find out that we have a net force in the x direction equal to 100 and f net is going to be equal to 169.2. 75 newtons. So that now tells me the F net is equal to 169.75 newtons. Guys, I'm just going to substitute that number now into that same F net that we see there. So this formula is now gone. I'm now going to substitute that into this right here. So now I have the F net is going to be equal to mass times acceleration. Once again, the driving point of the whole problem is to find out the acceleration. So let's make a substitution here. F net was 169.75, let's put that back down here again, it is going to be equal to mass, and here's the mass chilling out over here, we haven't used it in a while, that's going to be 58 kilograms multiplied by acceleration, and we finally do 169.75 newtons divided by the 58 kilograms, we find out the acceleration is 2.93 meters per second squared. That's positive or rightward direction. There we go. All right, guys, so what we've basically done is use all these formulas up over here. And as we go through these formulas, I literally ask you just to cross them off one by one. If you're ever stuck, look at the remaining ones you have. Then also look at the variables you have been given in the problem and say, what can I use? You cannot use a formula when there are two missing variables in there. Likewise, I couldn't use the first formula right off the bat. I had mass, but I did not have acceleration or the net force. So please be careful as you choose your formulas, guys, okay? If uh, you want a good idea to practice this, I'd say practice this video over again, but you try it this time and see if you come up with the same exact answers I did. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Best wishes, guys. Peace.